Where does Brainchip head from here? ASX BRN has had one of the most meteoric rises for an ASX growth stock over the past year. Brainchip currently sits on the verge of commercialization. The first initial production run is done, the chips are off the line, the development kits are now on sale, and the initial R&D phase of the journey is now complete. Investors wonder, with all of this progression, where does Brainchip and the story head moving forward? Today we're going to have a broad overarching discussion. We'll discuss different facets of the Brainchip story. We'll talk about the technology and why Akita stands out with the world's first commercially available neuromorphic processor, particularly as the world moves to a more digitally integrated society where AI and machine learning will continue to proliferate out. Of course, we'll talk about the competitive landscape and we'll talk about the different risk factors as many people discuss when they consider Brainchip. However, there are different factors that help to mitigate some of these risks and we'll explore each of these as well. Before finally, we'll conclude with a discussion about where ASX BRN and the broader AI and digital adoption trend may head from here over the next decade and beyond. If you do enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. We make daily videos, so if you haven't, welcome. Make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on. Before exploring the different factors surrounding Brainchip's commercialization strategy, the initial question is, what is Akita? So Akita is the world's first neuromorphic processor that's commercially available. It's a top of class technology that's first in class in terms of commercial availability, but it's also best in class as well, according to reports. And we'll talk about different factors that contribute into that. Essentially, what Akita helps to do is it facilitates high performance and low power AI processing at the edge. So edge processing refers to processing on device or on local devices away from the cloud. So it's decentralized. And of course, this is becoming more and more important. It helps to save on bandwidth and latency, but it is also becoming more important as different types of technology proliferates through our everyday usage. There's a range of different factors that make Akita fascinating. We'll unpack these in more detail later on in the video, but some of the key highlights include incremental learning and the ability to have one-shot learning and on-chip convolution on the actual chip itself. Of course, most of the initial processing is previously being done in the cloud. You'd have to collect the data on device and then send it up to the cloud and then have it processed and brought back. AI and machine learning on chip, along with these other features, is unfound of and it's previously unheard of, but Akita packages it all in on one system on the chip. It provides ultra low power consumption. To understand how Akita works, previous different types of neural networks obviously processed in ones and zeros. This of course is data intensive. You have to continuously be processing. It uses a lot of power. However, Akita leveraging spiking neural networks only processes events, which means that it's low power. However, you can still facilitate and enable the same high performance. This is significant. But what it also has the ability to do is brain chip of release technologies that facilitate the conversion of existing CNNs, convolutional neural networks, to transform into their spiking neural network. So this means that many of the neural networks that were previously developed to help to facilitate AI by enterprises or different developers will not be wasted. They will easily be able to be transferred over to spiking neural networks and then use the Akita architecture. This is a significant step forward. And of course, as you release a new disruptive technology, not only are you trying to release your technology and scale the actual product itself, but you're trying to educate and grow the industry and the sector itself. And this is something that's really important to help to underpin that. We know that just recently Brainchip provided an announcement that the, the development kits are on sale and this will help as we'll speak about later on in the video. And we do know that Brainchip of course will provide both silicon as well as IP, but IP licensing is their focus for ultimate scale. It's a fascinating proposition. Of course, it's still very early stage. It will depend a lot on how much market share Brainchip is able to capture with Akita, but they have the advantages. They've got first mover advantage. They have a top of class technology. So investors are now watching to see how this next stage of the commercialization journey heads. A reminder as well, before we dive in, I'm not a financial advisor. The stocks we cover are not financial advice or buy recommendations. These videos are all just here as that general discussion to be a starting spot for you to do your own research from. And so just digging a little bit deeper into the competitive landscape. Of course, neuromorphic processing, spiking neural networks, it's a new technology that really does have the ability to change the way that processing and AI and machine learning is done around the world. As a result of that, Brainchip's not operating and developing within a vacuum. Of course, there's a range of other companies, many with deep pockets and some of the largest companies around the world that are trying to play in the space as well. Both IBM and Intel are developing their own neuromorphic processing technologies. They're not commercially available yet, so Brainchip does have that first mover advantage. But along with that as well, it's actually got a range of competitive advantages that make the Akita technology stand out. 
Firstly, the low power consumption. This is really a feature of the spiking neural networks. So all of the technologies with the same type of underlying tech really do benefit from this. Brainship with Akita have the ability to facilitate real-time on-chip learning and training. As mentioned, many of the incumbent technologies were not able to do that. The way that most of it's done at the moment is the training and the development is done in the cloud. Of course, being able to do this on device without network connectivity is a huge step change in terms of technological advancement. Brainchip significantly as well is TensorFlow compatible. So TensorFlow is an open source platform that's really renowned for the work that it provides in terms of AI and ML. And so being TensorFlow compatible really does open up accessibility for Akita to developers, enterprises, and different manufacturers and companies around the world that are comfortable with TensorFlow that use it. But it also really feeds into what we spoke about earlier, that it helps to grow the sector, helps to grow the industry, and it helps to educate the broader market about Akita's technological capabilities. And ultimately that could flow through to commercial opportunities as well, as people become more and more comfortable with Akita and the capabilities that it provides, and also ultimately become more and more comfortable prototyping and developing types of solutions through that. Brainchip, as mentioned, provides standalone possibilities with Akita, no CPU required, and it has on-chip convolution. So what really stands out about Akita is, yes, it's got first mover advantage. It's the first neuromorphic processor that's available. But even though the other competitors are trying to develop their own tech, they don't have the same capabilities that Akita has. And this is why investors are becoming interested in the proposition that Brainchip is providing. And so thinking about the pathway to commercialization, we know that it's a long journey. It's not a linear A to B. It takes time. It takes time to scale up. And often you see that real hockey stick type of curve. It can grow exponentially, but initially it can take time and development, particularly with disruptive technologies, is not a swift process. We know that the broader TAM potentially could reach as much as $60 billion by the mid-2020s, by 2025. And of course, the development and the growth of this TAM is not going to stop there, particularly as the digital adoption picks up pace. And so this TAM is likely to continue to grow moving forward. It covers a range of different areas, such as drones, automotive, mobile, consumer, industrial. But what's really interesting about Brainchip Cicada technology is it's got an almost universal and infinite universal application set. But also, as more developers get their hands on the technology, as people are able to start prototyping and getting access to Akita, more use cases will start to flow out of that, which means that it's almost got that infinite opportunity depending on how adoption goes with the technology. Understanding Brainchip's scale model, of course, they will be providing both silicon in terms of the chips as well as IP, but they are looking towards IP as that real golden opportunity as they continue to grow. Initially, revenue through that IP model will be mostly licensing as they sign their initial licensing agreements on that side, but eventually that will flow through to royalties and royalties do have the ability to stack as well, which is really fascinating. Of course, we know that Rome wasn't built in a day. The initial agreements in the semiconductor space are the most difficult because you've got to convince those initial customers to sign on board, to try this new disruptive technology. But if they're successful, if they can prove and provide utility to this new customers, then other customers and potentially their competitors will want to sign up because they won't want to be left behind and they'll be searching for competitive advantages. So as mentioned, it starts slow, but you can start to see hockey sticking and exponential growth if commercialization is successful. So these next years are going to be critical for the ASX BRN journey up ahead. We'd love to know your thoughts on it all. So drop in a comment below what you think about Brainchip and where do you think the story heads from here after the focus from R&D has started to transition towards commercialization. And so with all of that discussion, of course, there's significant excitement surrounding the opportunity for Brainchip. And as mentioned, it will be contingent on the market share that they're able to take as part of that broader TAM. However, there are inherent risks. Brainchip is still, by and large, pre-commercial. It's predominantly pre-revenue. And as a result of that, there's a range of different risk factors that investors must think about when considering something like ASX BRM. Of course, there's a range of different domains to consider. Firstly, competition risk. As mentioned, IBM and Intel are spending significant amounts of investment to try and develop their own neuromorphic processing technology. However, other competitors will enter and other technologies as well could provide indirect competition to the same sorts of solutions that customers are seeking. So this is one risk. Commercialization is another risk. Maybe it's not as easy to sell a keter as initially thought of. The ability to scale is another factor as well. From research and development to a global company focused on commercialization with investment and focus on sales and marketing, the different types of focuses for their company and to be able to transition from one side of the coin to the other, it takes time, it's not easy. And of course, financial risk. Maybe they run out of money. I've read and heard about many of these types of risks when considering Brainship, but there are mitigating factors to basically each of these. 
Firstly, factors like IP, product and team can help to mitigate these. On the competitor side, of course, IP means that you can't go from the quickest route from A to B. Brainchip has holds many different patents. They've recently got approvals for another recent one. But of course, when you hold IP surrounding your technology, it means that if you were there first, you have protection surrounding the best way to do that. And other competitors will have to go around and try and develop alternatives types of solutions. In terms of commercialization, of course, it is an inherent risk. Maybe it's more difficult to commercialize Akita than initially thought. But one way that you can circumvent that risk is by bringing in an experienced team who's done this before, who understand the space and who have got the necessary network to be able to scale. And from all reports from everything that we can see about Brainchip, they've done an extremely studious and diligent job of assembling a world-class sales team. Of course, everybody's familiar with the ARM connection that they have. They've got a range of different individuals that have come over from ARM, but broader than just the ARM connection. Of course, this is significant, but they've developed a world-class team from IR to sales to marketing, and they're continuing to focus on these areas. And of course, these are becoming more and more important as they continue to try and spread the word about what Akita's capabilities are and about why it will be so important as the ad digital adoption picks up pace. And then of course, there is financial risk. This is an inherent risk of any company that's pre-commercial, that's pre-substantial revenue flows. However, when you do dig a little bit deeper into the Brainchip story, you've got around $20 million cash on the balance sheet. But further to that, they've recently extended their financing agreement with LDA Capital. They have the ability to continue to draw down over the next couple of years, so they'll be well funded. And of course, it means that they won't have to do any further dilutionary capital raises. So they're unlikely to run out of money. They have the ability to continue to fund this commercialization pathway. So they've got a world-class team in place. They of course have got IP protecting their product. And as we've discussed in detail earlier in the video, they have a first in class, but a best in class product as well. So of course there are risks. There's inherent risks with any investment on any market or anything in life. Everything is a balance of probabilities, but of course it will depend on the different assumptions that you use and the lens that you view these risks will mean that you weight these risks, risks differently. And that's the fascinating thing about the markets. That's what makes a market. There's always buyers, there's always sellers, there's always two sides of the coin. And depending on how you weight these risks, depending on your perspective your, or your worldview, or the lens that you view different company factors, everybody's gonna have different assumptions of these. And so the question is, where to from here? Brainchip provided this fascinating visual. Of course, we don't know where this journey ends. Not only are we on the verge of commercialization, but we're on the verge of a new journey into digital adoption around the world. We know that technology is becoming more and more embedded with everything that we do. And AI and machine learning is going to be integral to that. Of course, to help to facilitate this transition and to help to facilitate AI and machine learning on devices, on many of these new technologies that we'll be using, there's gonna to have to be new solutions. And many are viewing Brainchip and their Akita technology as a possible solution to help to facilitate that. It's still early stage. It of course is much more inherently speculative than any of the blue chips. However, it's likely to be inherently volatile, but it doesn't invalidate the opportunity up ahead if a company like Brainchip is able to be successful. It's going to be exciting as disruptive technologies always are. It's always fantastic to see an Australian company flying the innovation flag in such a globally integrated marketplace. So we'll continue to watch where they head from here. Finishing with a statement that the Vice President of Global Sales and Marketing, Rob Towson, recently provided with Brainchip's quarterly report. He stated they're excited to engage with current and future potential customers. The feedback they've received has been entirely positive and the demand for inf information about the product has been insatiable. It's emphatic wording. Of course, there's a long growth runway ahead. There's many uncertainties, there's many complexities to navigate. We don't know where the bus or the journey will end. Rome wasn't built in a day. Sometimes, however, all it takes is a little bit of time. It's definitely one that we'll continue to watch moving forward. For now, for those who know, Akita Ballista. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out as well. If you're new here, welcome. We make daily videos, so make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on as well. As you guys know, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing we cover on the channel is financial advice. These videos are just here as a general discussion to be that starting spot for you to do your own research from. Thank you so much for joining us. For now, stay well and happy investing.